call me to order at 
which is essentially your know, growth, and it's 15 feet from the top of the bank, so it's pretty small. Um, the the mass, the AR, the corridors, the AR mass, the blood mass areas. If you look at the, the corridor map, uh, you look at the two look, there's, there's a lot more space. It maps to this corridor along there. So, you know, if you're thinking about a local blood hazard area versus your corridor, your corridor would have got more problems. Just so you're aware of that. Um, in addition to that, um, the tributary along the Commonwealth Avenue, the one um, the kind of U.S. Railroad, the one that goes up in the Mountain Road, um, and they're also um, they're corridors. They're not in your local special permit area. Um, so that would be new. Those would be new parts of town that would be potentially regulated if we go with this. Are there any questions on the mapping stuff? Ted, can I promise this with a big red thing on it? Is there more than one there? Yep. Oh, thanks. So the, right now, the river corridors that are portrayed here, we have no regulation. They're, don't, they're not in our documents at all. That's right. You mentioned them, you talked about them in the town plan a little bit, but they're not regulated, though, except for when there's an accident situation. Okay. The state will then... Um, regulate river corridors to get access. But Rose, that was something when we met that she wanted to leave in there as the river corridors. Right. I think her point of view is um, we've been through a lot of floods here in London, unfortunately, yeah. and you know, just as uh, you know, it was designed by the state to try to minimize future damages. So um, that's what she thought we should just talk about it again. Um, I will note that. Senate Bill 213 did pass, and that is going to regulate river corridors on a statewide basis. Assuming it doesn't get vetoed and other things, that won't kick in. If that stays law, um, or it becomes law, that really won't kick in for years or so years. So, whether you want to adopt river corridors yourselves or wait for that, I don't know. If that's something that's not going to do it. Okay. What would be the biggest difference between the river corridor regu um, regulations and like flood hazard? Would they pretty much be very similar in effect? They're, or? they're different. Um, so, think about the Jewel Brook uh, for, for a minute. Um, I would not recommend keeping river corridors on your local flood hazard area and river corridor. I think it's just too much. It's confusing. So, right now, the along the Jewel Brook, and it's 15 feet back from the top of the bank, basically no room to go. And yep. there's some there's some exceptions for you know non-conforming pieces to non-conformance. Um, the river corridor thing is going to be again more expansive and it's similar um, no new development generally speaking. However, there's some exceptions and it gets a little confusing to what's going on. So people get confused by the river stuff. So. Um, so if you look at these draft bylaws on page 12, it starts talking about those exceptions. So there's um, where you have a river, or excuse me, where you have an existing house upstream, uh, it's within the river corridor, it kind of creates this shadow called shadow. And so you can basically you can basically do um, new development within that shadow if you should kind of win certain distances. Um, so that's one thing. Um, generally speaking, for existing structures within the river corridor, you can't you can do an addition, you can do something like that, but you can't get any closer. Yeah. The river corridor is not about raising anything up. That's the flood regs. So they're really just different things. Flood regs are raising things up, generally speaking. For a quarter or don't get any closer. Okay. And that's still just a 15 foot from the top of the bag, right? That's what we have on the books right now for the drill book. Local is there. Okay. And with this, it would only be Jewel Brook. Would this encompass any other areas of town? If you if you decide to adopt the river corridor, that would be anything on this map. So um, okay. it's a little thing. 
Uh, so it's kind of it's under or over, depending on the point of view of the river corridors. So it applies to both. So if you're along the main stem, along Main Street, this will apply, and the flood hazard will apply. So you could potentially have a scenario where you need to, you're, you're making substantial improvements to your house, you got to raise it up. But you also, if there's an addition as part of that, you can't get any closer to the river, so you have to be off the side. So, it's, mm -hmm. so you know, again, there's, there's two layers, so it gets confusing for people. Um, but yeah, this is that it, that it um, prevents new development in harm's way or significant harm's way. What have, what have you seen in, for elevated structures in River Corridor, or what's what's kind of acceptable at the, for the state for that, or acceptable in other communities? Are, are there any examples of this you can think of where we're elevating structures? Well, we have right in our town, right? Well, there are some, yeah, so I'm a little more coming. Yeah. Um, but also, what's that little that's elevated across from uh, Mr. Darcy's? So, Brooke, like Brookhaven, Brooke Brooke but that would never be approved now, right? The way that that was done. I'm not totally sure. That's what I've been told. Like, that I don't remember if that's in the floodway or if that's floodplain. It was floodplain. It definitely it flooded. Really Whether or not they had the elevation right now. So, it, okay. so Brookhaven, what I'm told, it is definitely floodplain, and um, it was something where there was a time it got approved by default. Basically, the, there was a time line that expired and it got pushed through. But I'm just trying to think of any other examples of elevated structures in the state in these areas that we want to consider while we make, you know, while we go over this. So basically, basically, in my opinion, I would love to say if you build X, it works. But other than other than this, other than building this spec structure that we've approved and the state will allow, basic because then basically anything in these areas is is just whatever's there can't be replaced, can't be anything new. So um, Windsor, if you're familiar with Windsor down in the Jarvis Street neighborhood, it's not, I don't think it's Jarvis Street, maybe it's National Street, whatever. Um, in that neighborhood, right along the Connecticut River. The town raised the house up. Yeah. Um, that's in the flood way, actually. And so they did that as a pilot. And I think that's what you're talking about. That's yeah. an example. Yeah. Um, so. And yeah, so I think it works. It's just, uh, it's not cheap. You know? Oh, sure. It costs them $190,000 to do that. So, just to yeah. do that part of it. Well, the full renovation. Yeah. So they raised it up and then they renovated it. And then that's a pretty poor part of town, right? Town by the yeah, river? Yeah. Yeah. So, but there are areas where we have vacant land that's all flood hazard, you know, so with the land, you know, the value of that land really is minimal because there's really nothing you can do with it at all. But let's say, I know this is like going on the limb, but Shaw's, take Shaw's and put a first floor parking structure below it, raise the whole structure up 12 feet. Would the state, would the state allow that? Um, we have to see if our, our new regs allow this. In the same place that it is currently. So in the same place it is currently, even coming like coming into town on 103 in the in the land that uh, the land that they owns, um, next to the storage units, stuff like that. The land up behind Mr. Darcy's yeah. that's is for that, sale. I want to say the land by the storage units is floodway, you know offhand? I believe it is floodway. Right. Yeah. Is that, that? And that's not real. <laughs> There's like a no rise standard that comes into play there, so that probably is a difficult site. Um, you can do it, um, but like, you know, this is Oops, and we should one out somewhere in this modernization. They go, oh, um, regulations go above and beyond what we have. On page six, um, there's a section E development standards. The first one, I don't know if that also looks good. I kind of got to highlight it in the time. That's, you don't have that now, and that isn't happening. So, you know, what that means is if you're 
And that's like next to storage in that field there. Um, you build a building that's, you know, whatever, 4,000 square feet or something. You're going to have to basically dig a hole. You're, you're, so you're, you're for the flood water to go into. Yeah. Building a brick in the bathtub, so you know, you're, at, you're losing mm -hmm. flood capacity there. So somebody would have to basically dig an equal size hole. Which so is what, come. which is exactly what, um, when he came here, Alan Couch last week was talking about that. Because yeah. he's having his basement filled in. And, and there's some benefits to that, you know, from a scientific point of view. Like, do you really want somebody to build a new house that makes everyone downstream more at risk? But it does make doing projects harder and more expensive. So, you know, again, there's those trade offs. Hmm. But what if the only footprints of the ground are piers? The volume of those piers then would then have to be Essentially, excavated. That's a lot less that you would have to do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So again, there are ways to do it, like rotating yeah, one piers. So yeah. That, that might have to. So do we want to go through um, this document? I can't seem to get on Zoom. I keep saying waiting for the host to start the meeting, Peter. So I because I wanted to share this document. We all have a copy of it, but. In case anybody wanted to make changes to it, I wanted to make to be able to share it. Every time I try to go in, it says waiting for host. Yeah, Brendan's on. I tried twice, I canceled out and got back on. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Only the one. I took it. I took the Zoom link after the after the one that's on the town website. There might be more out here. I wanted to be able to share my screen. I'd like to see the other one. Pardon me? No, but you don't have one yet. That's fine. I'm just, I just clicked on the link. It's basically, it's just the river core. It would be this overlay with this. So it's pretty much the same thing. Oh, yeah. It's pretty much the same thing. On the town website, on the agenda. I mean, we can go forward. Um, I just wanted to be able to share my screen in case you guys want to make changes. But um, Jason and Rose and I met, and we took the, the two charts that were in the old regs and turned them into one chart because um, Rose felt strongly um, that we needed to, and I totally understand that because she works with these regs every day, especially in the last year, that we needed to not lose everything that was in both charts in the old regulations. And so you'll see in blue the things that were changed. So the first th change you see is um, adding junkyard storage facilities. We added the words junkyard and facilities to the word storage. And if you compare the old one with the new one, you would see too that some of the things are conditional. Uh, you can see here that we added the local flood hazard area into the chart that hadn't been there before and the special flood hazard areas. So we'd specify between those two. That's also what the first is very important to do is make things a little clearer because you understand. So on that next page, we work out a substantial improvement mm -hmm. uh, versus a non-substantial improvement. Again, so it's a little clearer. Before it just said improvement, it kind of has like a P on C. And so we just want to... Yeah. No, I... This already looks easier to understand than what was. So there's a lot to look at. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, again, we were trying to look uh, at this chart primarily thinking of keeping things relatively equivalent to what we have now, but as it is. But the river corridor, they knew that first column there, um, that, that's totally new, and it can't be. So be aware of that. Are there any questions we folks have? I don't know what we're going to be talking about. Yeah, there's quite a few changes to this chart. Eric? Uh, when it comes to the, the river corridor, it's sort of adopted this. New regulations. My thought was those to existing construction and also affect those, you know, the time comes. Obviously, on the side of this, there's a few buildings, the Bell, uh, Megan Mountain, and Megan Mountain's foundation sits in the river. They're actually in the river. Wow. So, you know, so, you know, say they, we 
these new regulations, you know, I, I always would like to do something about how it would affect what we currently have. You know, make it not to get that back to the middle of that wash away through it with that back. Uh, you know, all those businesses are long. You know, a lot of the black people have the male charge is a little further away, but some of them stay right in the river. So they are. Uh, 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 That's how you can tell them why, because they're actually getting better. So, that's, that's, so, so what, if you get to the core of our organization, you know, right now, you know, in real world situation, how does that affect, you know, property and those businesses, building and everything else? So generally speaking, and talks about generally speaking, existing conditions are allowed. They're basically grandfathered. Um, additions are going to be a little trickier in that they can't get any closer to the river, right? You can still do them, but they have to be sort of away from the river, maybe downstream or something like that. Um, I think you can rebuild uh, in the same footprint. I think that would be okay. Uh, there may be a time frame if it washes away and come back 10 years later and rebuild it. Probably not. But if it's within, I don't know, I don't know exactly what it says in here. I believe a year or two is critical. It's not going to be good. So, you know, it makes, you know, uh, if you're in the river corridor, you don't, if you're only in the river corridor, we don't really care about the situations. The flood are a different story that we do care about than you know, what you're doing inside. Um, yeah. So, in a case like Long Main Street, you're looking at both. You're going to be looking at both of those yep. factors. So in the, in the river corridor, just as an example, I have the back end of the structure that's 25 feet from the bank. I can't put a 10-foot addition on the back to bring me to that 15-foot? Probably not. And, you know, even like the deck is sort of questionable. Um, maybe probably not, but we could explore that more. So 15 feet is basically nothing at all, but then there's also just no further encroachment towards the river, regardless of how far away the structure sits from it? Well, the structure would need to be within the, again, if we're talking about the river corridor, yep. it needs to be within the river corridor. If, you're, if the building is within that corridor, yeah, basically, you're... You can't you're encroach on the river at all, regardless of how far away the building speaking, is. There, there's some nuance. You know, let's say the buildings on either side of you are a lot closer to the river. Yeah, you probably could. Because you, you have any closer than those. Next door buildings. Right. And that's kind of where that shadow, the river shadow, comes yeah. in a little bit. Yes. Basically, yes. you're already going to be protected from the buildings next to you. Right, right. So, you know, they're, they're, it's flexible to the extent that there's existing development. When you're in a, in a site that's out of the movies and there's no development there, and you have a river corridor and the other box, it could potentially be difficult. And situations to build a house. So what I'm thinking about right now is uh, the Jewelbrook, the mill, old mill property. Like I think that's already per, you know, whatever permitted moving forward. But are we going to be creating regulations for any type of development like that to be completely restricted? So that that yeah. vacant mill property would not be able to be developed at all. Aren't they going for a FEMA bio? But I know you're asking hypothetical. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, well, I'm saying so at the corner, the corner um, of, what is it, right across from Pumley, Pumley on Andover Street, or where Silas put in. So it's a vacant lot right now. It's in the river corridor. Hmm. So would that, would this new river corridor regulation make a lot like that completely undeveloped? I don't know if I can answer that definitively. I, I, yeah. you know, there's, there's flood walls and there's you know wells and old foundations and whatever. I'm not totally sure about that one. Yeah. There, there might be a way forward there, um, but in a total untouched field, yes, it would be probably uh, undeveloped. Hopefully, you can find a little chunk that's outside of the river corridor. 
<laughs> but yeah, yeah, that could be an issue. Lots like that. So how are you feeling about adding this river corridor thing to the regs? I mean, I, I understand it. Yeah. I just, I'm thinking about any new development in saying is, you know, that's why I keep asking about, is there a spec structure that would be allowed in these areas? You know, so, I mean, yeah, like. I mean, not so much from River Corridor, you know, that's more of a flood zone thing. You know, the River Corridor is really more like, how close are you to the river? Yeah. Uh, versus, they don't care if you raise up or not. When you have River Corridor and flood, that becomes a very good question. Um, it's really more how close you can get to the river. And I've seen in Acts 50, you know, I can't, this is years ago, maybe things have changed. But there have been, you know, the city plan folks who have, you know, allowed for where well, there's a lot that's totally within the record. And they sort of said, okay, if you, if it hugs the back block, you know, okay, you know, we'll do that. So there may be some, there may be some little room. Yeah. You have to explore that on a piece like this. Um, everything, yeah, would we'll probably have to be, but. Oops. Eric? It was something Rose felt strongly about when we met that it should. Yeah, I mean, I think that the idea of having that so the you know the flood regulations from FEMA are worried about you know basically the insurance kind of thing. They don't want houses getting investment that are going to get flooded and damaged. So if you're making a substantial amount of improvements to that building, you want to raise it up or drive flood proof it. So you know the furnace isn't going to get flooded out again. <laughs> so they're all about inundation. They're all about raising up above the flood levels. Where before, we're more concerned about like erosion. And there's all kinds of spots along the river bank that are sucking off. So they don't want you to, generally speaking, they don't want you to build a new house that has a lovely view of the river and then you know a big storm blows and then all of a sudden your house is like yeah. Yeah, because yeah. they want to avoid putting new structures in nope. harm's way. Because no matter what level of flood proofing you put into them, if the ground is washed out, then yeah. it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. I get you. Right. So, you know, it's really, that's the major, that's the major difference. And I think you've been generally seeing, especially in Ludlow, more of the erosional damages. Although Main Street is different. Main Street's more in addition. Higher elevations are more about more erosion, definitely. And so again, it's sort of like green was bad, July was bad. How? What can we do to make it not so bad next time? Because mm -hmm. we know there will be next time. We just don't know where. Yeah. And that, that's sort of the, the philosophy behind it. Um, I point out again, though, that the state Senate two thirteen is going to take this on unless it's vetoed. So. It could be a case where the town says, you know, let them deal with it. It's complicated. We don't need to worry about it. No, we so if it passes, we automatically just take that section out because it becomes Act 250. Whatever you want. And that call amount. However you want to deal with it, that's fine. Or if you like the local control idea, you could adopt it. And if the state does take over in a few years, you could continue to administer it more. Lots of options, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, it's good to know your options. <laughs> so what's the, I guess, I don't know if you, can, if you can speak to this, but what is the difference between what's in front of us here and what 213 is bringing forward? Is, are there major, is there much difference in tone or more restrictive? So I think generally speaking, it would be similar. The... Senate Bill 213 is basically the uh, Bless you. DC. So then, if it does not get veto, comes off, DC needs to create rules. Yep. 
in the days, basically in four and ten is about this time. And so there's going to be a couple of years when I get there. I don't really know what the rule making process will do, we'll end up with, but probably it'll be fairly similar to what these model regulations are today. Okay. But you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it could be a little bit different, who you knows? So is anybody wanting to change that here now? So I think the question is do we want to keep do we want to keep it? Why are there mm -hmm. And if you do, I guess I would suggest we get rid of the local hazard. Area. So I think that's the question. You want to Should we wait and see what happens with the the um, the governor on June seventeenth before we make that decision? Whether he vetoes it or well, not? Even well. Yeah, I guess if he vetoes it, then I guess we, we know. But even if he doesn't veto it, we still don't, we won't know fully what it will entail for yeah. a while. Not quite a while. Right. So basically we're looking at river, the river corridor column could pretty much replace the local flood hazard area column. That's the way I'm looking at it. That's the way we're looking at it. So when I'm looking at that column, the river corridor column, it looks like there are more things that are conditional use or conditional review such as new structures, whereas local flood hazard area, they are prohibited. Yeah, I do think there's a little flexibility in the river corridor. Yeah. Um, but it's also a larger part. It's a larger swap. Yeah. Yeah, plus the minus is I finally did get on here, and it was my bad. I was clicking on the wrong one. So I could share that screen if you want. You guys want me to? When I, when I look at this, is this as far up Andover Street that River Corner would go? It continues all the way. Yeah. So, so if, if the town, so I was really just kind of thinking about the village. Yeah. Yeah. You can zoom out, and you know, there's, there's a lot of River Corridors in the town. Yeah. So what other river? So that there be river corridors elsewhere? Oh, yeah. The village? Uh, what's not, what's not is hard to say, but yeah. if nothing else, there's going to be roughly 50 feet per mile bank on most streets. There's, there's a few smaller ones that will be regulated. I can't tell you off the top of my head what those are, but yeah, most, most streets are going to be affected by this. If the town adopts it as well. Well, I think, I think we definitely need to understand the scope of that. Well, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, I would definitely, yeah. As, you know, tonight I was really just yeah. thinking of the village. Uh, yep. That's a very good point, and absolutely we should look at that in more detail. Mm -hmm. Well, we do, yeah, we would get finish this one and then work on that one for sure. Eric, you had something? No, just to that point, I was just, I'm thinking of the little trivia things like this one that. Cuts across the middle street that's you know only four feet wide if that sort of fits in there too because houses sit right on that. There's one that comes out of combat, there's one that comes out of big speed. You know, there's one that comes out of uh it's just a village. Um, well then there's also you also have um help by the lakes. You know, yeah, tons. I mean, it's, it's just it's going to go right, but that one on Mill Street, there's just like a pattern of that sheet. Would that be a, I don't know what that's considered, but it's, I don't know, see one on Mill Street, it's only four feet wide. I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah. yeah. Mill Street is basically just the main stem. It was like the main, um, the Jimmy Terry on the Honor Law is something that has a fall on this river corridor. Um, and the tributes are along the mountain road as well. Yep. Um, I don't see any others. Combat might feed into that. It, it might. It might feed. I think it'll, it goes next to the library and it goes out to hmm. you know, the river by the bridge and that might be it. Yeah, that, that might be it. So it you know, comes down the mountain road across the road through it and it basically stops at the middle street and then it comes to the main steps. Because then there's also just the re the reality of the actual corridor itself. Because even parts of Jewel Brook, those banks are all armored. I mean, they'll pre you know pre any type of ordinance, but 
Yeah. Would, would those armaments be able to be put back? So, like the metal plating that's hold, literally holding the bank. Probably. With those, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you're maintaining an existing structure, then it's yeah. sort of probably. Um, uh, I mean, it's extreme alteration permits and all these yeah. other things. So, yeah, yeah. probably. So. so, because, I mean, there are areas that I know of that erosion that's it's really not it's not possible with the armoring that's there, but then there's areas that don't have it as well. So, and, you know, that's a good uh, question. I don't really know fully the scope of this, so in those areas where it's really, really significant about armoring, yeah. you know, does this really make sense? Can we not do a section of it because of that? You know, not yeah. sure. we could potentially talk to you. I think there's a move. I think John Broder can just been in place. Mm-hmm. We got, I don't know who he is, but potentially we can talk to that person. Could we invite them? Him, her? We can try to get it. We never do. I don't know them for anything, but we can, we can try to reach out and connect. Yes. Yes. So I think about how the rules changed that after the last law was session just passed. The plans. If you have a 15 foot buffer that the river changes, you know, down by the plant of the river, you know, moved over 40, 40 feet over from where it was, you know, in May. Does that make, you know, does that certainly make that building? Well, you know, that's a good question. I guess, you know, we have to ask Rose and Jared how they interpret things, but um, when it's an existing building, so you can exist. When we do it in a new project, you know, where do you measure that? You know, so that's a very good question. I think that's one reason why the state wants to do the coral things, because we're just yeah, and mm-hmm. you know, it's, they're always so, going to. The results, I mean, that's what they do. And so the measure that's in the top of the bank yet, potentially could move over time. And so that, I think that's one argument for the river floor. Um, I don't know that I have a real question against it. Just go around the top of the yeah, and the thing is, is that if the river was allowed to move, there'd be less flooding. If it was allowed to meander in places like Shaw's, there would be... Basically, the more we can get the room, the better off. We yeah, have. the more room the river has, the, the better. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I guess I'm just looking for clarification. So, like, for, for number six, under the river corridor, it's a P and a C. It's permitted and conditional. How, would that, how does that work? I'm kind of lost. Yeah, or any or any of them that have multiple. Um, I see that as a decision of the zoning administrator. I think Ted, you talked about that last time too. That to make it more flexible for the zoning administrator to figure out whether they need a permit or they need to have conditions put on there. Okay, so it, it allows for discretion. Yeah. Okay. By the CA. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. There's some discretion. Least, hopefully, it does slow down. Um, usually, it's like really like a smaller, it's really yeah. small sensory structure. It's committed. Yep. Bigger. Yeah. It's kind of OCDRB. Yeah. Like that. Usually, it's how that is slow down. Does anybody have any questions about the changes in the chart? I mean, you can see them in blue. Probably better on your paper than up there, but. Yeah, well, we, we added that whole thing. <laughs> I, mean, I understand that, and you should definitely think about it. But are there any questions on what we've done with special flood hazard area? Yeah, there's a lot of changes in the local flood hazard area. Yeah, so the local flood hazard area, I guess I'm just, everything that was moved to conditional was, prior was permitted. I think I might not have formatted that quite right. I, like it's showing as new, but yeah. underlined. It should. Oh, okay. 
I believe I will double check between right now and next time, but I think those are all existing. I think that's yeah, those changes on uh, <laughs> yep. yeah. No, that's 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 fine. I think that's a mistake I mean new structures, structural storage facilities. Yeah, he's he spent quite a bit of time trying to make it consistent. So I'm hoping it is, but you know, we'll, we'll double check. So we really looked at both charts to make sure we didn't leave anything out that we thought needed to be in there. Well, I, I guess I'll say at first glance, looking at this, I think as everything, local, special, floodway, it's going to stop people from doing things that they shouldn't probably be doing in the first place, like building a brand new house right next to a river. Yeah. But that also allows a lot of discretion for everything in between. You know, there's people, you know, they have to have a plan. If you want to build a small accessory structure, it's, it should be conditional. There needs to be, you can't just build it with a plant when you're in these areas, so. And this is 15 foot kind of the river area, so it's pretty small. Yeah. It's the other way. Yeah. 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 No, I don't see any major. Everybody's okay with this chart? Jeans not in your head? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we're trying to make this relatively consistent with what we have now. Mm -hmm. The major differences are we, we talked at one point we needed to go about there's a the model bylaws have you building them two feet above base flood elevation. We would change it to one and after that that rose, we had it back to back to two. Yeah, so because we, really, that conversation. we do have to have that conversation. Um, that that's new, that's different, and that will um compensate for the flood storage capacity. Thing you're talking about before. You yeah. that big thing, you got to do it. Those are new and uh, you yeah. not be aware of that. Yeah, we changed that because Rose pointed out that the last storm was 10 inches above the first foot. So it was a lot closer to two feet then. Well, the point is it was above a foot. Yep. <laughs> No, so basically, as we were saying, I don't, that anything new or anything rebuilt has to be two feet above base flood elevation. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, there's substantial improvement over to new construction. I'm not sure what Sure. Yeah. And how about like relocating electric and stuff in a existing place? Yes. They got flooded out. Does, that has to be two feet higher, too, right? Generally speaking, yeah. Yeah. So, like, I'll use the example of the corner of Elm Street, no thanks, old building that's being, you know, substantially renovated right now. They wouldn't be able to significantly improve that building without raising the entire building two feet or having the utilities above two feet above. There's, there's different ways in FEMA guidance and that so. If it's a non residential structure, it could be dry proof. It's, yeah, yeah, sure. I see. Thanks. Um, you could potentially just literally, there's a Paradise Valley shop in the original thing up. They, they basically just built a floor, you know, two feet above the existing floor. Yeah. And good. You know, that was a yeah. type of elevation. No other real major improvements structurally. So, there are ways, you know, it depends on the building and its location and how high the water gets. But, yep. um, but yeah, they would have to do something like that. So, yeah, I guess I'm just trying to thread the needle between for properties that are kind of in disrepair or people want to substantially improve them and to be able to do that and not have to lift the entire structure. There are ways potentially, potentially to do it. Of um, course, yeah. Sure said no. But each, each structure is different and depends, but yeah, there are some similar ways to do it. I think raising the floor too gives a place for the water to go. <laughs> so have you seen it also, so say an existing structure with a full with a full basement, full foundation, and leaving it kind of open for water to pass through that? Would that be acceptable for like the display, the water displacement, uh, or generally, yeah. I mean, so 
If you're making substantial improvements to the building, you're banned. Usually, you're, you're going to raise up the floor or something like that. To, to yeah. To, uh, usually, you're filling in the basement up to the ground elevation, and then you're um, typically you got flood beds. Whatever comes in, whatever goes out. So, you don't want to cool it. You don't want to cool it. You don't want to have hydrostatic pressure on the walls and you know, yeah. a little the wall or something like that. So, yeah, generally speaking, I think that's what. Okay, if people want to look over this um, local ha hazard area, um, page two and three, that's all new, right? Or just changed a bit? Well, it's, it may, maybe this is my mistake, it was just a format. So we start, I started with the model bylaw. Right. Um, I had tried changing the group um, just to sort of track the changes I made to it. Okay. Your comments. I was, that's not really new in the sense that that exists, that language exists right now in your zoning um, bylaws. Just plugged it in there and it's showing it. So sorry about that confusion, but um, that is, I added it to modify it, but you had it. I'm trying to think of what other changes we made. Where's the um, the language about that um, displacement? So I'm digging a hole. It's on page page six at the end, I think. No net loss of flood storage capacity. Page six. I have a comment on that. Yeah, this is impactful. It's mm -hmm. a little bit of sense. <laughs> yeah. It's not particularly clear, but that's what that is. Except as needed to fill an existing basement or mitigate an existing structure. Right, so if you're building a new structure or a new addition, is it? If, you're, if you're fixing an existing house within that footprint, this doesn't apply. Yeah. If there's a new, new footprint or new um, expansion of the footprint, um, you know, you're going to have to compensate for that. Is, there, is it basically a ratio of one to one? So, you it's know. I understand it, yeah. 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 Are we okay with that language? Well, I think if you get too specific, it will limit people from being creative. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty uh, open. So, you know, this model is a little above and beyond what's required mm. for national flood insurance. That being one of those that's kind of extra. Um, if you don't care about the ERAP emergency relief funding benefits, um, you don't need to keep it. You know, it's not required to be stay in the National Flood Insurance Program. Um, there's some, you know, it's a good idea from a scientific point of view, but again, thinking about the village level, maybe that's just too much. You know, it's something that it's your own, whether you want to keep that, whether you want to go from two feet to one feet, or you know, those are judgment calls you can make. You can modify this as you wish. As long as you meet the national flood insurance requirements, and to really make sure that you know we should get this to the new job. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to invite that person for our next meeting if it's possible. Yeah, I, I saw the name somewhere, so I'll forward that. Okay. Thanks. What are people thinking about that? Do we want this no let? No net loss of flood storage capacity as part of our Jason. I hear him saying we don't have to have it for the national flood insurance. And that would basically just be for any new anything new, any new addition or new structure or anything like that. Yeah, which is not a lot of opportunity. And, you know, there's some benefits that for people who are already in harm's way. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, because you're compensating. No, so again, there's some, you know, there's some good thinking behind it, but it is isn't. So okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure we're aware of that. Mr. Alden, you want to weigh in on that? I know the context of so it's unknown to this exact scenario of the bill. So the state's going to maybe do what they call HA study, uh, hydraulic, uh, hydraulic and 
hydrology. So it's we poured some new footage and we have to prove to the town and to the state that those footage we, we, we poured in the back have a zero percent effect on the river. That's going, the state's going to make you, the Rose is going to make you, the zoning department's going to make you get the letter from the state that includes an H and H report. The H and H report is what you're talking about there exactly. So for us, if that was, New columns show that we've increased the leveling by a tenth of an inch. We have to find some place else to make up for that. And, you know, that's the proverbial digging the hole. But, but digging the hole isn't as easy because then we've got fishing game and, and, you know, there, there could be some sort of rare salamander in the river, so you can't just dig a hole to make up for something. Yeah, that was going to kind of be my next thing. So that's getting into controlling the river corridor at that point, in, in a way. I mean, are you required to hire an engineer for all that? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, for sure. By the state, you're required. Yeah. Every state report costs $10,000. So um, in this particular slide, you know, we're talking about the Vanilla River Challenge because we're the whole Yeah, it's right up against the river. Um, so I hear that. Um, in a less challenged site, it's not as big of a deal. It's still a thing. It's still yeah. Next to the river. Um, I think River Corridor is a little looser. I don't know that you necessarily need an engineer because you need because so many cubic yards of fill, so many cubic yards of excavation. So, so, so Eric, I'm kind of so those. Why did you put in those? Why is the mill putting in those pylons? What's it going to do? We had to resupport the deck that was damaged. So we got some temporary yeah. uh, footage to hold the deck because we broke the new deck. But the temporary footage was spent by the engineer. He wanted them to be bigger than the original footage. Yeah. So the original, the, the new footings are twice as wide as the original footings. So that, in theory, is taking volume out of the river, yeah. potentially. Yeah. Uh, a scratch of an inch, but it's a scratch of an inch. Yeah. There's no leeway. And there's no to your point that you just said you're always going to have to get that prove that. Yes. You're always going to have to prove that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think mean, But my, these rigs these rigs don't exist right now though. But you have to do that because of Act two fifty? I think you have to do it because you're in the close right here. Okay. Yeah. And so there's a little different metric, I think. Okay. So you flip away, you're definitely hiring an engineer, you gotta do this H and H study. In the river corridor, maybe you can get away without an engineer, but you still need to provide the town with adequate numbers. This is how much development is happening, so that you can verify this much material. So, because what I'm thinking about is so, what if that contradicts with the orders for flood proofing, right? So, I have to make these, you know these um, improvements to the property for flood proofing to, or to maintain the building or protect the building. So I'm thinking like buttresses, right? So now all of a sudden I'm, I'm being told by in one element, I have to build buttresses to re-support this wall and flood proof it. But now I'm also displacing volume of water. And so now I can't do that because of, uh, because of my displacement. I can't prove that I'm I just, I don't know, I can see that they would con they would come into uh, conflict with one another. Like, I'm, I'm making these improvements to protect the building and maintain an existing structure. I'm displacing water by doing so. I'm displacing now too much water that I'm now in, in violation of, of this, what we're talking about. And now, around and around we go. It's like, catch-22. I think that's a really good question, and maybe... Maybe we do think a little bit more about like the minimus or really small stuff. Yeah. Um, maybe you should be exempt or something. Maybe, maybe we need to have a path forward for something like some kind. Of or something that is, you know, it's 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 necessary. Like it's you know, it's not an option. Like I need to I need to keep the building standing. Right. I'm going to displace water in order to do that. You know, I I just I could see yeah. Hopefully the common sense kind of administration is prevail, but not right. So I think no. I think it's a good idea to think about. It. Yeah. That's all gone away. <laughs> the common sense. You're gonna end up with the engineer. 
whether you like it or not. Yeah, yeah that's my You're question. You're going to have to prove it. My question was to ask Eric why the engineer wanted to do that. Obviously, it's to make it sturdier. Yeah, you're, and so it doesn't float away next time. There's a state environment. It's 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 a state environment. You know, anybody can look at it and say, all right, it's clear that this is only the class we raised by half an inch, but that doesn't matter. Yeah. There's no, there's no common sense piece. There's no, no one is going to look at it and say, no, yeah, that's not going to do anything. Because you have to please the state floodplain manager, and the state floodplain manager will say, I need to see an HMH report, you know, and they don't want to sign off on this. That's why every zoning officer and everybody and everybody like that in every town is going to, they're going to want to see that. They're not going to go any other direction other than that. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, I'm just that's the process. Yeah. That's the process. The, yeah, the process is getting more and more as we go yeah, in life. You don't so. see the engineer report. That's no one's going to put the, the A on the line and say, yeah, yeah okay, that's clear, it's only, you know, an inch thing, how much does a, a, an inch thing hold? It's a volume of the river that's, that's 800 miles long. No. I, I'm not saying I like any of it, but that's where we're going. And this this is only for new stuff anyway. Yeah. yeah. So are we okay with this in here? I want to kind of get a feel here. I know the net loss and the new structures of flood storage capacity. Basically an eye for an eye. For, for flood water. I'm unsure because I keep thinking about, so I know that this is, I think, now the next, but um, around Shaw's, they were going to build a wall around the building. That's going to displace water volume. Did they get that approved from FEMA? I think it got, I think it got renamed or whatever. I honestly don't know. Yeah, I don't know but, either. I but just... let's say that they're going forward with that plan to flood proof or protect the building. But now it's going to displace too much water somewhere else to go somewhere else. So we're, I, I'm afraid that we're creating um, regulations that are contradicting the ability for us to maintain the structures we already have in these areas. Yeah, but this regulation is not for ones we already have. No, but you're still so you're, you're still building so so the vault so the with building that wall around Shaw's, you're gonna displace. There's gonna have to be that engineer report saying how much water is that wall gonna displace. And now if it's displacing too much water, now that building you can't protect the building. Well, yeah, right. I think that's worth thinking about. You know, I think um, yeah, I think in the village there are some lots that really don't have anywhere to dig that hole. So it's not. Yeah. So I think it is worth thinking about. Can that can that hole be off property? So can it be off the property in question? Probably, but you know that's so interesting. Um, maybe there should be some exceptions for challenged properties. Well, well, I'm also just saying, I mean, all of Vermont, all the infrastructure, utility infrastructure is built in valleys throughout the entire state, including, especially here at Ludlow, we have a really narrow valley. So all of town water, town sewer, all the utilities are in these flood areas. Yeah. And so are we creating regulations that are going to basically say, your building gets flooded out, you can't... <laughs> You, you can't do anything about it. Tear it down. Like, are we? Is that the is that the only option that we would be leaving by adopting this? In some in some instances, you know, that's that's what that's where my that's where my hesitation comes from with this. But I think that's, that's, just, that's I think me. that's something we should ask. Um, you know, that flood person when he when he comes. I'm gonna write it down. What what about permanent structures? They're constantly flooding. That's what you mean, right? So I'm saying that, so Shaw's is a perfect example. Yeah. The state, the, the, the engineered plan was to build a wall around the building. And, 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 and waterproof but that, the but, building. But that wall is going to displace a volume of water. Now, if that wall displaces the too much high volume of water downstream, now you can't build a wall. Henceforth, you can't floodproof the building. Henceforth, the building can't be rebuilt. Right, so it's the domino, and then around, around we go. So what do you what do you do to put Shaw's now? You can't build a wall. What do you do? You can't if you're flood proofing 
creates that displacement of water. Right. That's what I'm afraid we're creating that basically a no way out scenario. So they didn't end up doing this flood wall, right? Just I, I, flood I believe that's where they went back to. But that was the original plan. Yeah. So they're just going to get flooded again. I mean, they're going to flood proof the back of the building. Well, hopefully they're dry flood proof. So the land of the building. Right? Yeah. Right. Right. I don't know. And I, and I know, I'm th I'm, you know, I'm thinking outside the box with this stuff, but lift the whole building of Shaw's up 12 feet and put a, put a parking structure under it. Is that allowed? I think that would be allowed. Yeah, it'd be allowed. they just wouldn't do that because it would be extremely expensive to do that, so they won't do that. But but still, uh, regardless of regardless of costs, right? I mean, that's so that's the thing is that is that that's that's what I've been trying to have that answer because that is in other areas of the country that I've seen that's what they do. Or maybe underneath it, we should have boat landings instead of cars. Sure, or <laughs> you know, like, or Tesla charging. I mean, so yeah, to, to think that it's like, I'm not talking like Dr. Seuss. These are, these are implementations that are in our reality. Oh yeah, I know. You know I know what you're not, talking about. Not Vermont, so we'll be I think it's a great Vermont. idea. I mean, it keeps the water yeah. flowing. It's better than it is now because there goes the water underneath it. Yeah. And your car, but. Yeah, so I mean, it's your question, you know, no net loss of storage capacity, except, you know, we're needed to mitigate the structure. So you're raising it up. Scenario. Yeah, it's a really good idea. So it's just ex expense prohibited, though. And that's probably yeah. So anyway, so we can't come to a conclusion on that. So we should ask. Hopefully, we can get that person here, and we can ask them about that. I don't think we made any other substantial changes, Jason. Right? Those were the biggies. I think that's mostly what. Yeah, this is mostly what we see before with, with yeah. the session. Yeah, we had Ryan, I think, read most of it out aloud the first time we met. Yep, we did. Okay, so it doesn't sound like we have a whole lot of questions left on this. That seems to be the biggest one. Does, it, does anybody else have any other things they want to talk about? Oh, the keep it two feet is on page 18. We had changed it to one foot. I think it's, I think it's practical because it's what happened. Yeah, yeah we're just, they're not going to get any smaller, that's for sure. Yeah, you need to look at the input of what's happened in the past. I yeah. think that's big. You can talk about all the stuff from 40 years ago, but now it's all happened. So yeah, it's not a 20-year kind of flood, 20 flood anymore. It's <laughs> like a two-year flood, hopefully two years. <laughs> well, if you're, you're spending the money to raise the flood, you might as well go to you know, kind of that. Well, that's, yeah, that's why I should say go three. Yeah. Jason, do you have to go? It's 535 because the next agenda item, I just wanted you to weigh in on that. I have no Okay, I just, the next, is everybody okay with moving on? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. So I, what I heard everybody say is we agree with the changes right up into the page six one. And that's yes. where we are, not page six, whatever the water displacement one was. So, yeah, the water displacement yeah. is just understanding where all the river corridors are. Yeah. Right. And whether to include it or not, too, in this document. Yeah. And by the time we meet, We'll already know about the governor and what happened to that act, you know, Act 250 changes in the legislature. River corridor. Okay. So discuss changes made by the village trustees to the proposed village bylaws and how these changes are consistent with the town plan and state law. Amend the report to the village trustees and send it back to the village trustees. Um, the village trustees, they didn't want to hold a public hearing to begin with. I went and I think Brian, weren't you there too? Well, anyway, they asked me to come up with a summary of what the major changes were. So I sent that to them ahead of time and all the proposed village bylaws, the whole document. And the only issue they had was the um, 5,000 square feet 
in the village commercial residential and in the residential areas of time. Town, I know I told you guys they were going to say that because that's what they said when I asked them about it the first time. They were like a fifth of an acre is really small. We don't want to go to a less than an eighth of an acre. So I wasn't surprised, but that was the only change they wanted was to turn, um, but not the village commercial part, the commercial buildings, they want to keep it 5,000 square feet, but they want to turn the village R R C R R C, the residential part of that to 8,712 square feet, which is a fifth of an acre. And they also want to change the village R to 8,712 square feet. And it was, that those both were at 5,000. That was the only change they wanted to make. They approved the Andover rezoning to um, the Village R2 that we had come up with. The, um, the Justin's comment was, I think it's a great idea to reserve areas of, town, of the town for just housing, basically. And what else happened? Um, oh, yeah, I was trying to get my little thing in there, even though we hadn't agreed with it, except Ted had agreed with me on adding a few more things to Village R2. But they were like, no, let's see how this works out first. Like... I talked about Orion Avenue and Thompson Avenue and Leverage Heights and Okemo Heights, and they weren't, they don't want to do that yet. Um, so I talked to Jason about what happens now, and he was saying that um, I had to amend, amend the report before they have their public hearing, which is going to be June 4th, if anybody wants to come. If you do want to come, let me know, because I'm going to have to warn it um, if, there's more, if there's three of us or more there. The, I didn't really have to amend the report at all because that's, those sections were already changed. And all the report says is that there were changes in those sections. But Jason also was saying that we have to make sure it's consistent with our town plan, the change that they wanted to make, and the state law. And it is consistent with the state law because it's, they said five acre, uh, one acre, five dwellings. So that's what fifth of an acre. So it is consistent with that. And the consistency with the town plan is that you know, concentrating development in the village where there's water and sewer, that's consistent with the, the new state law that five to four unit housing can be a permitted use now in the village. So that's our part that's consistent with that in the town plan. So anyway, there wasn't really any amendment I had to make. And I just need, need a motion to send the report back to the village trustees, if you agree. I mean, there's not a lot we can do about it because they're, they make the decisions. We don't make the decisions. We just propose what we want to have happen. But I thought it was cool, pretty cool. That's the only change they wanted in the whole document. And that change has been made? I made that change and sent it back to them. Okay. Yeah, and that's the uh, changed proposed village bylaws will be what it's at the public hearing. And they're having that meeting like half an hour earlier so that um, their regular village meeting can start on time. I got to give them the hint about saying it starts immediately. Remember how we had to wait around half an hour? Because I didn't put that in ours. You said that was June 4th? Yeah. Their regular meeting is right following it. Yeah, the regular meeting is going to follow the village trust, the uh, public hearing part. And I don't know if they're going to want, um, you know, us to get up there and read the whole summary again or not, or if we're just going to say, I'm not, I'm not sure how they're going to handle it, but it's up to them. It's not our open hearing, public hearing, how they're going to handle it. So are we agreeing that the change they want to make is keeping with state law and our town plan? And can we have a motion that says that and send it back to them, the report? Jason, am I doing this right? I think, yeah, the main thing is, um, so the trustees can make changes, and they just have to give you, planning commission, a chance to review the, what those changes are, and then that for the report defeats it. And so I think, yeah, there's like, the report's still valid, all good, you know, kind of thing, or you can go with that. And do we need a motion? Do we need a motion on that? Motion is quite a good idea. Okay. Oh, the other thing is, is I, I didn't tell you about this. Um, you were there, Brian, because you were the one that weighed in on this. The only other thing they had was um, about needing, <laughs> trying to remember it. You, your example was the condos made significant changes, and they didn't, we didn't have any way oh, to go in there. In, yeah, interior, interior yeah, Justin had a problem with that at first, and then Ryan explained it, and he didn't have a problem anymore. 
Okay, right? so they want to they want to leave that in. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's that would be a great benefit to the CLA. Let's go that much. Because Ryan was saying that some of the condos make substantial improvements, like half a million dollar improvements, and no one ever gets to go in there to, yes. to yeah. raise their taxes because they you're not going to invite you in. So this change in our village zoning would give us an avenue to get in there and yeah. reassess. Yeah. Protect protect the CLA. That's, yeah, that's, protect our CLA. That's great. Um, so the only question I have, Jason, is that the change in the the, the density, so the, to the fifth acre, that is that is congruent with the new state regs. I know it's totally up to speed on what might be buried in the uh, 250 bill, but it's consistent with state laws in this state. Okay, no, yeah, that's as good as we can do, right? So, so I'll, I'll make a motion to resubmit the zoning documents to the village trustees as amended. I'll second that. Is there any discussion? Okay, I'll, I'll listen. Do you have any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Comments from si Jason, thank you so much. Thanks. You want to go try to grab some dinner before <laughs> you're on the road? <laughs> okay, that sounds good because it sounds like we have a couple of different things to discuss with that person. Is it a woman? Oh, good. Comments from Citizen. Eric, you got anything for us? I got nothing left. Got nothing left. No problem. Plus, it's invaluable information because you're going through it. Okay, so our next agenda item is the junkyard ordinance. Um, I did a little research on this. I went looked at all the state of Vermont stuff, and basically, they are only the stuff in the state of Vermont is about junk cars, and they all have to be regulated by the scrap. What is it called? Scrapyard regulations. They have to get state permits and everything to have a scrapyard, and then they're all listed on the town website. But they don't talk about other junk. The state of Vermont it just talks about cars. But I did, um, when we talked about the Manchester one, but I could not find that. I went on the Manchester website. I couldn't find their junkyard ordinance anywhere. I go, oh, um, you got it? No, I, I, yeah. I could have. I could just call Peter. I'm going actually going there tomorrow. Will you do that? Because it's not easy to find. Yeah, I'm going there tomorrow. But I did, I wanted you guys to give me a little homework to take a look at Montpelier's. I did it kind of an hour before I got here, and I wanted to take uh, Jared to copy it for us, but I don't know. I think I left it on my desk by mistake, but I thought Montpelier's was similar to ours, and I was talking to Ryan about this before the meeting. Um, it seems like the, your two options are make them clean it or make them screen it, and the Montpelier one kind of does both, which I liked because it was like make it clean it, make them clean it if it's um, a public health hazard mm -hmm. and a safety issue, but screen it make them screen it if it's not. So I kind of like that about Montpelier's. We can take a look at ours again. Do you guys want to do that? Yeah, because the only, the only question I have about what we already have on the books is, why is it not being implemented so or enforced? So, I mean, I know I'm, I'm sorry I used um, the Dunnett property as if there are others, it's, it is, this is the only one, but why, why in our current regulations has no action been taken? And are we, what are we, what do we have to change so that there could? I think if we, if it was a bylaw, then we would have somebody to enforce it. We have our CA enforce it. But because it's an ordinance and it's enforceable by the village trustees, Yep. And by Brendan, I mean, I, I know Brendan went and personally talked to, to Mr. Dunnett about it. Um, yep. And they came to some agreements about it. But I think that's the um, the thing about the Montpelier one, too, is it's actually a bylaw. It's a regulation in Montpelier. So how do we change that to a bylaw? That would be the select just, board, I would imagine? Yeah, well, we would just create it. Um, I don't know if we create it in the village and then again in the town. I know they're going to merge at some point, but I'm, I'm sure we'll still have some separate village zoning because of the water and sewer issue. Um, 
So that would be a decision we'd have to make. Do we want to keep it as an ordinance? Doesn't seem to have much meat in it. Are the people that are ready to enforce it aren't comfortable enforcing it, even though I know Brendan did in a couple cases? Or do we turn it into a bylaw and then it becomes something that Rose and Jared enforce? Well, my, my opinion is, and how I think all this got to the, the planning commission was basically to re review it, maybe wordsmith a little bit. Those decisions are not this board's decisions, in my opinion. So, yeah, uh, ordinances we, are not our, our no, thing. No, not yeah. at all. So, uh, I mean, I don't know if we want to wordsmith it a bit or see why, you know, is that as, is it as simple as that, why there's no enforcement because it's an ordinance on a bylaw? Well, then that's our conclusion, and that could bring it in the select board to make a decision. You know, so I don't know. How, I just don't know how how much we want, how deep we want to go into this. It's just the biggest question is: there's zero, from what I can tell, there's zero enforcement anywhere in town. Is that because of how it's written now, or is that because of the ordinance bylaw issue? I think it's an ordinance bylaw issue. Me too. From what I hear. Yeah. And I'm not. A, and Brendan, well, did, he didn't tell us what to do. He just said, start the conversation. That's all yeah. he said to me when I asked him, you know, yeah. why he wanted us to talk about it. Yeah. So what? So we have started the conversation, but we're not quite sure what to do. say you work towards a bylaw from what I'm hearing and mm -hmm. let the people that need to make these decisions take it and go with it. How do, there's nothing more we can do. Okay. I don't know. Is there anything more we can do? So maybe at our next meeting, so. we'll make a decision about whether to make it a regulation. And I'll make sure you guys have that Montpelier one where it is a regulation. So at least you have one example of that. And Ron, if you can figure out what Manchester has. So I'm thinking, yeah, what we can do is we can just collate this. We'll get Montpelier, we'll get Manchester's, we'll get ours. Mm -hmm. We'll make our suggestion and pass it up. That's it. Okay, okay so we'll just words, wordsmith the ordinance and send mm -hmm. it along, even though it's really not our responsibility. Well, not even wordsmith it, just call and say, here are, here, are other, here are other options. Here's how they're facilitated. Here's our current language. Yeah. You know, say, well, if you, it's either an ordinance or a bylaw. And oh, yeah, they would under, they would make that decision anyway. So, exactly. we just, so, so we just say, okay, here's our ordinance, and here's the possible way to do it as a regulation. Yep. What do you guys want to do? So, yeah, I think our, our task, yeah, potentially just package it up. Okay. And you know, push it up, uh, push it up the flag. So the next stuff. time I will send you the Montpelier one. Brian's going to get us the Manchester one. There was a couple others online. I didn't read them all the way through, like the Montpelier one, but... And next time we're going to write, <coughs> write regs for Ludlow, possible regs, and present the regs and the ordinance and say, which one do you want? Okay? We're all good on this? Even, even, even less than that. I was going to say, well, why do we even regs? have to do that? Yeah. Well, okay. Just, yeah, just... Just ask them for what they want. What do they, you know, if, if you want to keep it as an ordinance, they need basically, to decide for yeah. us to even spend any time, anybody to spend any time. Okay, yeah, we need some direction, that's for sure. Okay, so number eight, NDA. So NDAs are neighborhood um, developmental areas. And I've been hearing about them at the regional meeting for, for like a year. But Logan, I was talking to Logan, my nephew, about this because he said that they're pretty complicated to, to do. Um, what it means is you take the streets in your town that are adjacent to Main Street, and all of a sudden you have these neighborhood development areas where they're, they are able to access a huge amount of grant money to fix up their buildings if, as long as you have these NDAs, these neighborhood developmental districts, and you've named which streets that you want included in those. And they can be every single street that's adjacent to Main Street. And Logan said that it's, it's a complicated process, it's a lengthy process, but like no towns have taken advantage of it. And it's full of money. It has so many grants in it. And the towns just don't even want to take it on. And I talked to, I emailed Jason about it. And Jason goes, well, I have some money and I can come and work with you guys on it and guide you through it. So, but we need approval by the town manager and by the select board. And, and by the, um, I mean, the village trustees, obviously, because it's Main Street and the adjacent streets. And so I asked Brendan and Bob if they put that on their agenda on June 4th after the public hearing during the regular meeting. 
because we just have to have them say, yeah, well, I want you to work on this, which was one of the reasons why I wanted to kind of drop the noise thing too so we could get to that. Because he's saying, which, you know, Logan's saying we should strike while the iron is hot because nobody else is taking advantage of it. Sure. No, it's, I, so it's I, basically to fix up residential um, homes, homes on those adjacent streets through grant money with no strings attached. You know, no, it's not supposed to cast the town anything. Hmm. Other than facilitating the grant, right? So the homeowner is responsible for applying for the grant or the town? The homeowner. Oh. We, all we do is we designate these neighborhood, you know, developmental areas. We say these are the ones that, you know, that are, we want to benefit from this program. I'm, I'm all for exploring it. It sounds, yeah, it sounds, sounds good to be true. I yeah. know, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm not waiting for the catch, but. <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll find it. Yeah. Well, according to Logan, it's, you know, nobody's done it and it's a lot of money. Something maybe we get some money from the state for a change, huh? Next month, the gender part planning. I did leave off rules of procedure because I wanted, I think we should all be here when we decide our rules of procedure. I knew Judy would be here. Obviously, back to flood hazard regulations, and we'll invite the uh, John Brooker Campbell replacement to answer our questions. The junkyard ordinance and noise chapter, I'm going to take off of there for next month's agenda planning. Other business, are there any board member comments? Are there any citizen comments? Senor Allen? <laughs> I will take, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 aye.